Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, geographers. Welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we talked about Von Tunen's model of agriculture. Today we're going to be going into Unit 5, Topic 9, the global system of agriculture. Throughout this course, we've talked about how the world is more connected than ever before. Globalization and advancements in technology continue to reshape the world as we know it. And agriculture is no exception. Today, food is traded on the global market to states around the world. As we continue to see countries trade with one another, we start to see them become interdependent on each other. What this means is these countries now rely, they depend on one another for different goods and services. In this unit, we're just talking about food and agricultural products. However, we can see this dependency when we get into our industrial unit as well. Countries around the world have distinct site and situation factors. They have unique climates and physical terrain that allows them to produce certain agricultural products. For example, we can see that countries in the Southern Hemisphere can produce a variety of agricultural products that the Northern Hemisphere countries can't during the winter months. This allows our grocery stores to no longer have seasons. As countries can trade with other countries around the world to make sure they always have a variety of food. Today we can see that more developed countries or MDCs benefit the most from our global trade of food. Oftentimes food is produced in less developed countries and is shipped over to more developed countries. This allows the more developed countries to have cheaper food prices and also a larger variety of products. One of the reasons we see farmers in LDCs export their agricultural products or luxury crops to more developed countries is because they're able to make more profit in those more developed countries. People in their own country can't afford to pay the higher prices. This creates an imbalance between less developed countries and more developed countries. As farmers who are located in a less developed country now rely and depend on trade with a more developed country, farmers in LDCs experience more cost barriers that prevent them from scaling up their business. They lack modern machinery and are more likely to exploit their natural environment to produce their crops. This can lead to deforestation, desertification, soil erosion, and also the salinization of the soil. Salinization is when salt starts to build up in the soil. This makes it difficult for plants to grow as it prevents them from getting water. These environmental hazards often happen due to the farmer's practices, such as monocropping, a concept we talked about in our Unit 5, Topic 6 video. Now, farmers who are located in MDC have a significant advantage over farmers located in LDCs as they're more likely to receive subsidies from their government which make it cheaper to grow their crops. More developed countries also have a more robust transportation system and infrastructure which makes it easier for farmers to sell their food across the country and the world. This global trade of agricultural products is allowing society to specialize more. We can see we now have access to food around the world and it's allowing us to have more goods and services. Unfortunately though it disproportionately benefits the more developed world, as they're the ones who are getting the cheaper food prices and larger variety of products, while the less developed world is seeing a dependency on that trade as they continue to export more of their agricultural products and are more likely to produce luxury crops that support the needs and wants of people in the more developed countries. This leads to food shortages in the developing world, and it can also lead to higher food prices as well. So today we went over how this new global market market of food impacts both the developing world and the developed world. Now comes the time to practice some of the concepts we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comments below. And while you're down there checking the comments, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's a great way to say thank you for the videos, to help me make more videos, and also make sure you don't miss any future topic review videos. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Also, if you are struggling with your AP Human Geography class, consider checking out my Ultimate Review Packet. It is an awesome resource that covers all seven units of AP Human Geography. You can find a link in the description below. This resource will definitely help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, geographers, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching the video. And until next time, I'll see you guys online.